Goals are what win games, and ensuring that you maximise your opportunities is critical. Helping us through this vital area are Geelong's Lee Colbert and Essendon's Matthew Lloyd. We started by asking them what they consider the main points when faced with a set shot for goal. When you do get a shot at goal, it's important to, to find out where the mark is from the umpire, and uh, secondly, give yourself enough room to go back and uh, kick the goal. What do you think, Lloydy? Yeah, Lee, uh, my preparation is um, you're pretty tired, maybe, just before you're having a shot for goal, so I'd always take a few deep breaths, you know, just relax, block everything out, and just focus in your mind what you want to do, and that's pick out a target behind the goals, just look at it, and when I'm running in, then I'll look at my, the ball and where I've got it and where I want to kick it, and then just it should always work out where you want to kick the ball. Uh, it's important to stay relaxed, uh, keep your head nicely over the ball so that you're uh, you know, in line with the target, and uh, with uh, the finish of the kick, make sure that you do kick through the ball and uh, to the target is where you want to go. Yeah, when I'm actually kicking for goal, I'll make sure I'm always running in a straight line, um, have the ball on my left footer, so I'll have it over my left foot, and make sure I guide the ball down, not drop it from a high level, but drop it from as low as I can, um, just as Tony Lockett does, and um, just aim straight over the goal umpire's head. Okay, so let's have a look at their techniques. Commence the kick relaxed. Take a deep breath out. Don't forget the drop shoulder technique. Make sure hands are webbing the ball. Concentrate on the ball pointing vertically to the ground. A tip here for players with smaller hands, position your hands lower on the ball. Align your body with two things in mind. First of all, with a reference point on the ground and your target. Secondly, with the ball slightly favoured on your preferred kicking side. Also, keep in mind the need to avoid unnecessary side movement on your run up. Commence a gradual, balanced run in a straight line. In terms of correct distance between you and the man on the mark, pick your own comfortable margin, but don't get too close. You have absorbed all the above information, now you have to focus on the ball you should be aware of a few things. An obvious acceleration of stride. Planted foot must be generally pointed to the target. Hips and torso should be facing your target. Your non-guiding arm should be out laterally acting as a counterbalance. You should have a good extension of your hip and knee through the backswing of the kicking leg. You should also note during this action the slightly bent plant leg. It allows you to bear the body's weight and it should be pointed in the direction the kick is intended to go. It's important to also remember here that the plant foot should not be placed too close to the body's midline. This will allow your hips and kicking leg to swing correctly in the desired direction. The guiding hand stays on the ball and is generally released below the hips. It is imperative that players keep their eyes over the ball during this process. Next on the checklist is to make sure that on your follow through, your toes point to the target. Through the kick, it's important to transfer the weight of the plant foot from the heel to the ball of the foot. This allows the power to be more efficiently distributed to the kick leg. Finally, make sure that you follow through properly with the kicking leg. This will make sure that the foot has accelerated through the ball.